Hello, and today I'd like to tackle a question that I've been personally asked a number of times and that I also see pop up uh, time and time again in the various uh, uh, Facebook uh, genetic genealogy forums or, or groups. And that is an important question. Uh, and I would go as far as to say that knowing the answer to this question is, is required for understanding and being able to analyze your DNA matches. Um, so let me give you the most generic version of the question, and, and that is, I match cousin A and cousin B on chromosome 6. Does that mean we share a common ancestor? And this is not a yes or no question, although often the person posing the question thinks it is. Um, and I want to start off by giving you the general rule, and it's a little bit long, so I'm going to parse it. You know, I'm going to explain what each qualification in the rule means and how to deal with it. So the general rule is that if you and cousin A and cousin B all match across a significantly overlapping span of the same copy of the same chromosome, and that's called a segment, it is highly probable that you do so because the three of you all inherited that segment from a common ancestor. So the first qualification on there is it, it, it's not enough that the match is just on the same chromosome. It has to be on the same span of chromosome which means the same place on the chromosome. And, the, and, and position on a chromosome is usually measured in megabase pairs. You can see if that's the case, uh, if you look at your, your match uh, on a one-to-one -one comparison, say on GEDmatch or on my Borland Genetics tools, or if you use a, a DNA painter and you can see visually, you know, whether the places where you match cousin A and cousin B uh, overlap each other or not, you know. And... That brings us to the next qualification, which is that it's not enough that they match on the same span of the same chromosome, but it has to be the same copy of the chromosome as well, because uh, fundamental to understanding uh, genetic genealogy is that you need to know that you have two copies of chromosome six. You have two copies of each chromosome, uh, one that you inherited from your father and one from your mother. So... Um, Let's say you match cousin A on your paternal copy, copy of chromosome 6 and cousin B on your maternal copy of chromosome 6, even if it's like the same area on chromosome 6, um, not the same common ancestor. I mean, you may have a co same common ancestor somewhere in your tree, but that's not why you, you all match each other on that same portion of you know, chromosome 6, because you know you inherited the segment where you match cousin A, say, from your father, and you match, you inherited the segment where you match cousin B from your mother. So that's not even the same side of your family. Um, so there are two ways to tackle this problem um, in terms of being able to determine whether or not you match someone on the same copy of the chromosome. Because it, out of the box, when you take a when you take a, a DNA test, it doesn't tell you which copy of the chromosomes you match people on, and that's on any site, even the ones that give segment data, like uh, well, all the ones that give ancestry. Um, so you got to do a little work on your own for that. And the most common method for determining whether you match on the same copy of the chromosome is called triangulation. And that simply put is, do cousin A and cousin B also match each other on that same segment uh, across you know, a significant portion of that same segment? And if the answer is yes, then you, know, then you move on to the next step, uh, which we'll get to, the next qualification. If the answer is no... Uh, then you'll know that's because, you know, cousin A matches you on one copy and cousin B matches you on the other copy. Otherwise, they'd also match each other. Um, the next qualify, oh, there's another way to do that. And I also want to throw that in because it's actually, it requires more of an initial investment of work. Um, but in the long run, you never have to triangulate again once you phase your data. If you can use uh, phasing, either using a parent or a child, and uh, some of the more advanced raw data tools, uh, like those provided by me or, or, or GEDmatch, um, you can permanently you know, have, keep a copy. You could separate a copy of the DNA that you received from your father and put it in one file or one kit. Uh, they call it a phased DNA kit. And keep a copy of the maternal copies of the chromosomes in, in a different DNA kit on, on my site or on GEDmatch. And then you don't have to worry about whether they match each other, uh, cousin A and cousin B, on that same segment. They, they will if they match your phased kit because you only have one copy for them, which they could be matching. And it either 
matches it or that it doesn't. There's, there's no second copy that they could be matching to coincidentally. So that's what phasing is all about, or it's, that's one of the uses of phasing. Uh, but triangulation is probably a little more common, but the advantage is if you phase it, you never have to triangulate again because you've already phased your entire genome. And uh, all you do is see whether they match your paternal or your maternal side. And if they're on the same, the same span, then you know, yeah, there's no need for triangulation because they will um, be from the same ancestor. Subject to a couple more qualifications we have here. And one is I said that it's highly probable that you do so because the three of you inherited uh, that segment from a common ancestor. I didn't say that it's guaranteed. Um, so one of the things that makes it much more likely is if the uh, the overlap is more significant uh, where you match cousin A and cousin B on that chromosome. Um, if it's a span of chromosome that's over 25 centimorgans or say 100 centimorgans, if it's 100 centimorgans, then you know you've got a common ancestor and it's probably a pretty close one. Um, but if it's over 25 centimorgans, I'd say it's almost almost certain that you've got a common ancestor uh, responsible for passing those segments to you and that it's in the genealogical era that's someone you could probably add to your tree at some point. Um, but I do want to qualify that a little bit. And notice I said that you all inherited the segment from a common ancestor. I didn't say in my, in my general rule answer to the question that it's necessarily one you'll ever find in your trees. And there are a couple situations, uh, reasons why that could, could occur. Um, and, but they're often easy to spot. So when it's a sort of shorter segment and you see that you've got like a thousand people matching on that segment, sometimes people call it a pileup. I don't think that's very accurate. I mean, well, I guess it is. I mean, you're a pileup of, of matches on the segment. So it's very descriptive actually. Um, but it probably is due to a uh, common ancestor, assuming that it's significant in size enough, the, the segment. Uh, I know there will be some people that disagree with me on that. However, that ancestor may have lived, you know, a thousand years ago. And uh, the reason there's so many matches is because they may have passed down that segment to thousands and thousands of descendants uh, of which have tested, you know. And, and the, almost often that occurs um, because, you know, segments will die out. I mean, there's only so many children per generation and you don't you don't pass your entire chroma your entire set of chromosomes to your children you only pass half and each generation you know there's less and less that comes from that ancestor but if they marry within the same gene pool and that's called endogamy for hundreds of years uh, then that segment's more likely to persist and in fact what will happen is that members of that population in modern times a high percentage of them will have that segment and even though you match that high percentage of them, that common ancestor may have been one of the founders of the population a thousand years ago. It may not be someone that you'll ever be able to put in your tree. Um, and also just something, you know, uh, well, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to rephrase the answer to the question, I guess, in, in terms of, you know, the proper terminology, not the yes or no answer. If you match cousin A and cousin B and they also match each other across at least a 25 centimorgan span of chromosome six, then yes, you inherited this 25 centimorgan segment from a common ancestor. And assuming you don't match thousands of people on the same segment, the common ancestor is likely to have lived within the genealogical time frame. And with a bit of work, you can probably find that ancestor depending on the availability of paper uh, genealogy resources in the region that ancestor lived. Um, and I guess that's my official answer to the question. And I hope that helps uh, some people. And, the, and, the, and the, the real takeaways from this, you know, even if you forget, you know, the entire thing is you got two copies of each chromosomes and that's important. Matching on one, uh, matching on the same copy of the chromosome is the key to whether or not you're going to share a common ancestor. It's, it's, you know, impossible that you inherit it from the same ancestor, almost impossible. If, if it's, you know, on two different copies of your chromosome, I mean, unless your parents were related, right? Um, so, and then the other aspect of that is chromosome is not enough. I mean, chromosomes are big and there's a lot of real estate on them. Uh, the, the place you match on them uh, is important, where you match and whether you match over the same span on that same copy of the chromosome. Um, okay, till next time.